I'm Dan O'Day. Have you noticed the currently common practice of removing virtually every breath from a radio commercial in order to squeeze in more words? Here's an example. As an experiment, after the commercial starts to play, look away from your computer monitor and just listen to the spot. Want to feel renewed, rejuvenated, and special this holiday season? Then log on to 947thewave.com and enter to win the ultimate holiday pampering experience at Glen Ivy Hot Spring Spa. We'll be choosing lucky winners every day. You can also give the gift of a $100 Glen Ivy gift card for only $75. That's right, right now for a limited time, buy a $100 Glen Ivy gift card for only $75. Make everyone in your life feel special with a Glen Ivy gift card. Call 888-GLEN-IVY or visit glenivy.com to buy yours now. But hurry, this special offer is limited. Okay, how many selling points can you recall? I would try to help you out by listing them all for you, but they went by so fast that it would probably take 10 minutes of stopping and resuming for me to compile that list. Why is it stupid to remove all the breaths from a commercial? Well, for however many thousands of years that human beings have communicated via speech, they've also breathed. For the entire history of humankind, speech has included pauses for breath. Not vocalizing for half a second while inhaling is not dead air, it's an integral part of speech itself. So why is this stupid practice so common? A commercial such as the one you just heard requires that every breath be removed to make room for the far too many words that inhabit the copy. In other words, bad copywriting. Yes, I will be the first to point out that often the incompetent account executive insists that the copywriter include far too many details, which requires far too many words. The radio salesperson, in turn, would like to blame the client, but the client insisted. Sorry, in this case, the buck stops with the account exec. It's the account executive's job to educate the client. The account executive supposedly is the radio advertising expert. In reality, of course, most radio station salespeople have been taught how to sell radio advertising, but know virtually nothing about the fundamentals of good radio copywriting. That includes, alas, the legions of account execs who are required to write their own copy, even though they don't know how. Well, but the customer is always right. No, of course not. Often the customer is wrong, and professionals don't let clients throw their money away because they're too frightened of the clients to educate them. This particular commercial probably is the result of an account executive who doesn't know enough to be able to educate the client and of a poor copywriter. They might, in fact, be the same person. You need to listen only four seconds into that commercial to recognize bad copy.